So here he's got an EF341SC ready for the bridge preparation. He's taking the tape off the fingerboard. He's adjusting the truss rod to make sure that the, there's tension on the, the truss rod, making sure it's true, and then putting a couple fixtures on. Drilling holes for the, the, the points to hold the pickup in the system. And then he'll take it to this other station here where he'll uh, actually route a hole through the body of the guitar to accept the pickup system. But he's positioning it now, making sure it's highly accurate. And so now a channel for the Palathetic pickup system is in there. He'll come back to this station. And then we put a piece of tape in the finish underneath the bridge that they eventually will peel off so that it's a wood-to-wood -wood contact when it gets ready for the bridge to be glued down. Okay, so here he'll take and just peel off the, the masking underneath the finish. Comes right up, nice clean line, and it gives it enough space to, to, for the bridge to overlap the finish and then also have plenty of surface for it to glue wood to wood. And so now he's checking to see if the bridge is the proper height for the guitar. He'll go and adjust it here on the sander. Once he's satisfied with this, he's checking for a good, clean, flat lie. Then he'll go back over and fit it. Check to make sure everything's fine again. Mark it off. Clean up any excess material. Put the bridge that's designed for this guitar in a bag. It goes inside the guitar and it goes on to the next station to be glued. So here we have a small, very, very small gang saw that cuts the bone nuts for the guitars. It'll sit in this fixture and go over these you know, really sharp blades here and cut them perfectly, you know, um, perfect thickness and perfect widths uh, every time in a jig that just rolls through. We'll show you in a second here. And I imagine there's got to be a piece or a jig that or a router that does 12 strings for for one for 12 strings one for different nut widths one for different string gauges okay, yeah so the, you know they're all like small small little blocks here i can show you so see these are the saw sets and they just sit there and and we'll get positioned in the machine for which whichever guitar is going in there cool yeah this one it would be a 47 millimeter nut so this is a wide you know like one and seven eighths all right this is where takamini gets to become a takamini because as you guys know you guys are proud of, of your electronics and your pickup system that's been, you know, uh, in the works for 50 sure. years? Sure. I mean, uh, most of the guitars we make have preamps in them. Yeah. And uh, the preamp sits in, a, in, in the top of the shoulder of the guitar, and it's removable, replaceable, but this is the, the machine that actually cuts the hole to actually receive the bezel that holds the preamp in it. So we're going to show a, a Glenn Prime model here uh, being cut for it. Cool. So once the hole is cut through the side of the guitar, the preamp gets installed, so we're going to show that here. It starts with starts with a, a a little bit of a sanding on the edge, make sure it's all clean. And how's it being held there? By suction cups. Uh, <laughs> you know, it actually will hold it harder than you know most clamps would. Then the end pin gets filled out, cleaned up. Oh, wow. okay. What is that for an uh, American set? Or reluctant? Well, it'd be one and seven eighths probably. Yeah. <laughs> and so now an end pin gets put in. This is just has a mini plug on the end, stereo mini plug, and it's held in place by three screws. Is it an OEM jack or is it uh, anything it's, specific? It's made for Takamine okay. and it's, uh, the three screws idea is a good idea because it makes it very field replaceable without having to worry about tightening nuts or, or bolts or things like that. So now, 
a little, uh, some padding gets put in to keep it from vibrating. And now the bezel gets placed in. And then four little anchor clips go in to hold it in place. And then a brand new preamp gets popped in. And there you have it. Okay, so here at this station, we're gonna put the Palathetic pickup system in. The pickup is the same pickup we've used since 77 now. So uh, here he's gonna put this into this Glen Fry. So go ahead. And, and, and to enlighten people that aren't Takamini gurus, is it a transducer that sits under there? Or? Yeah, it's a, a piezo transducer, but it's six individual, very, very large, very, uh, very shielded elements. So one of the things that the benefit of that is it gives you much better noise floor, much better dynamics than you normally associate with a piezo sound. And none of that piezo quackiness, yeah. you know, uh, it's, it, it, because it's such a large and kind of almost impractical design, it ends up being very practical. <laughs> and uh, you know, the crystals are literally at least 80% larger than anything else on the market. And here he's like tying the, the cables together they'll end up hitting those uh, aluminum clips on the inside of the instrument that were glued into the curve right now. You can see he's bending them in right now. And then it's kind of idiot proof because the RCA is, uh, is the, the input from the pickup and then the output from the, to the output jack is uh, the little mini so you can only really go in one way. And there it is. So here we see uh, this gentleman is installing some uh, Takamine branded Goto machines. Right now he's uh, he screwed them into the back of the headstock and now he's uh, attaching the nuts and the, the washers to finish it off. And these particular ones have amber buttons and uh, you know gold hardware. So at this point the label has just been placed inside the guitar. He's getting ready to uh, string it up. And so uh, on, this, on this particular guitar it has a pinless bridge, what we call a pinless bridge, which they feed the strings through the back and no pins, hence the term pistol, pinless. And put the strings in there. We fit it then with a saddle, I assume, and uh, the saddle is also bone like the nut is. On all the Japanese Takamine guitars, the bones and nuts are, 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 the nuts and saddles are all bone. And what's the theory behind uh, the broken saddle? Not broken, the split, but the split saddle. Yeah. Split saddle allows for uh, you know good intonation because uh, the the E and the B are going to be a different core size than the G and up, so it ends up you know making for a better intonation. The guitar plays in tune up the neck better, much like on an electric guitar, how you have an adjustable saddle. Mm -hmm. This is a saddle that is pre-adjusted already, and uh, it's something we came up with, and now is adopted by a few other manufacturers as well. Now the final placement of the saddle, is that just by friction and tension of the, the, the wood slot yeah. and then the yeah, strings? Yeah, the strings hold it in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they can come out very easily once the strings are off. And, you know, it's designed to be replaced as it wears, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you know, over the years. Although I've never replaced a saddle that I can think of in any yeah. guitar I've owned. And at this point, we have a whole guitar. So he's tuned it, he's checking it again, making sure it's flawless, getting it ready to go out the door. A little spot cleaning here. Starting to look like a guitar. I was gonna say, it's someone's uh, beautiful thin line coming to him real soon. It's a nice piece of koa too. So off it goes into the case. Killer. Zip it up. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> Ready Tom, to go. Thank you for showing me everything that is behind the doors of Tom.